Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim This is the English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Maulana Qamaru Zaman Sahib Dhamad Barakatuhum which took place on Thursday morning at Baitul Azgar in Wasiabad Ilahabad UP India Thursday the 2nd of Shaban 1444 corresponding with the English date 23rd of February 2023 Hazrat Wala starts off by quoting the ayat of the Quran Majid zuyyina lin nasi hubbu ash-shahawati min an-nisa min an-nisa wal banin wal qanatir al muqantarati min al-dhahab wal fiddati wal khayl al musawwamati wal an'am wal harth dhalika mata'u al-hayati ad-dunya wallahu 'indahu husnul ma'ab Hazrat Wala says that this ayat came to my mind and listen just to be to tell you about this year i always like to speak about something in which there is islah for me for myself apni islah umar radiyallahu ta'ala an used to make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the revelation of this particular ayat and understanding it well zuyyina lin nasi hubbu ash-shahawat beautified for mankind has been made the love of joys from women children large heaps of gold and silver branded horses livestock and plantations these are the comforts of the worldly life and with allah is a most excellent abode so it has been made beautified for man the love of joys from women children large heaps of gold and silver branded horses livestock and plantations so here dhalika mata'ul hayati ad-dunya these are the comforts of the worldly life wallahu 'indahu husnul ma'ab and with allah is a most excellent abode so umar radiyallahu ta'ala an used to say that oh allah you beautified this year you have made this year beautified for us now if that's the case oh allah then keep umar on i'tidal and on moderation meaning look after me you have beautified this due to which your man will be inclined to it oh la keep me on moderation you protect me you look after me now look at the kingdom or the amount of land upon which umar radiyallahu ta'ala and ruled then too you will be able to understand his level of abdiyat complete and total humility in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he begs Allah to protect him look after him and keep him on moderation so the sahaba here we are speaking about wealth also okay let's continue this verse briefly mentions some of the attractive things of the world which people feel they have to forsake when accepting islam Now this was one of the factors that prevented the Jews from accepting Islam. This perception is based on ignorance. Although a person might experience some difficulties initially, which are actually a test, he shall receive even more by virtue of his iman. Now many things of desire have been mentioned in this verse and usually a person possessing these is considered to be of some standing and authority however these are prone to be of limited benefit only for a while in this world and it shall only be iman and good deeds that will avail one uh, in the year after in the akhirat it is for this reason that allah taala states further these are the comforts of the worldly life and what allah is a most excellent uh, abode what allah is a most excellent abode now the sahaba also enjoyed or rather many of them possessed so much of wealth however there is a very great, great difference in all of this year and hazrat tanwi has put it forward so beautifully 
that he says that the Sahaba, they, if I can just get the actual ibarat for you, ji, hasil ye hai ke malikana tasarruf na karte te, balke chakirana akarte te, that they had this wealth, Allah gave it to them, they possessed it, however, they spent it not in a way as if they were the owners, rather as if they were just made, uh, given this as a trust, and in that manner, thinking that it is somebody else's, that's how they spent their wealth. You know, a person came to Hazrat Mahana Shah Wasiullah Sahib and he started reading some English sayings this year and that day. Hazrat Mahana Shah Wasiullah Sahib said, but the hadith of the same meaning that's there, you don't know that hadith. You haven't read that hadith. Now this is what he would turn the attention to. You know, Hazrat Wala is saying, I'm not saying that uh, he was a mujaddid. However, most definitely he possessed the pos position of ijtihad in suluk and in tasawuf. So Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib possessed great amount of uh, knowledge and we learn from all of this year there was a great value for uh, ilm and knowledge. And this year a person is not confined that he has to have that uh, type of dini ilm in the Arabic language. No, not necessarily. Okay, let's continue. Qul, أَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِّن ذَلِكُمْ Say, shall I inform you of something better than that? لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا لَنَهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةُ وَرِدْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ For those who fear Allah are gardens by their Rabb beneath which rivers flow wherein they shall abide forever and pure spouses and Allah's pleasure. Allah sees his bondsman. Wallahu basirum bil ibad. So after mentioning the coveted things of this world, uh, in the previous verse, Allah now mentions the bounties of the year after, which are much more superior. These, however, will not be for everyone. These are reserved for those possessing taqwa, the best form of which is to, uh, to abstain, or the highest form of this taqwa is of which it is to abstain from kufr and shirk and to accept iman. Without iman, no good deed is accepted, nor can anyone, nor can one attain a taqwa. Taqwa also invo involves abstaining from all major and minor sins as well as avoiding things that are classified as makru'e tahrimi or makru'e tanzihi and things that are doubtful. For those possessing taqwa, Allah Ta'ala promises gardens beneath which rivers flow wherein they will live until eternity. With that, they shall also enjoy the company of such spouses who are pure. The meaning of pure has passed now in verse number 25 in Suratul Baqarah. So here we are speaking about waridwanum min Allah, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shall be the greatest boon, the greatest to these people in the year after, the pleasure of Allah is indeed the best thing any person can wish for since it encapsulates all things, all other bounties and ni'mats. It is mentioned in Surah Tawbah. وَرِدْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٌ 
the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the uh, greatest and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the verse is of uh, repeated radiyallahu anhum wa radu an Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him ek ghulam ki usse barkar kya saadat aur nek bhakti hogi ke uske aqa usse razi hai usse razi ho a slave cannot aspire for anything greater than the pleasure of his master rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam related that allah taala shall summon the people of jannah to which they will reply o oh, our rob we are present o oh, our rob we are present and ever ready to enact your instructions for all good for all good is with you allah shall ask them whether they are happy to which they shall say o oh, our rob how can we not be happy when you have given us what you have not given any other of your creation allah will ask them should i not confer on you something better they will respond by saying o oh, our rob what can be better than this allah will tell them shall i confer i shall confer upon you and i shall i shall confer my pleasure upon you and i shall henceforth never be displeased with you after mentioning the ni'mats and the bounties to be enjoyed by these pious people allah taala then speaks of their dua for forgiveness and safety from jahannam followed by uh, their description الذين يقولون ربنا اننا امنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار the patient الصابرين والصادقين والقانتين والمنفقين والمستغفرين بالاسحار they are who are these people they are the patient the truthful the obedient the charitable and those who beg forgiveness in the early hours in the early hours So we speaking about Jannah at least once in a day ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal wa a'udhu bika min an-nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to mention these articles which are mentioned in the Quran Majid regarding Jannah and Jahannam and abundantly he would quote this dua to us and saying he would say to us that at least once in your day and night ask allah for jannah at least on the minimum even jannat will become pleased that you are asking allah for it and when you seek refuge in allah against jahannam even jahannam will become pleased about that another dua is that of allahumma kun lana waj'alna lak allah you become ours and make us yours you know on one occasion hazrat maulana shah wasiullah sahab became ill and we thought that it is the last moments rather even he thought this that i am now leaving the world nevertheless after all of this was over allah granted him shifa and he lived after that He said to us I actually thought that that was also my last moments and I turned my attention to Allah saying Allah to Allah that Allah give me some time so that I can make tayari so that I can make more tayari meaning he wanted to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a certain way Allahu akbar Hazrat Imam Ghazali rahimahullah has written elaborately about this a type of an example that he gives that people disembark from a vessel or a ship on the shores of this particular place some people go and they say let's go and see into the marketplace other people go around for a walk and others are actually scared thinking that they may just miss the ship when it leaves and in all of this year many people come back and they realize that the ship has left so this happiness 
and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something uh, very very great the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we want and Allah Ta'ala does not address any nafs in the Qur'an other than the nafs mutma'inna. We have to continue working and come out of nafs ammara into the nafs lawama, from nafs lawama into nafs mutma'inna. You know, people study and they study and they hand in CVs and then they wait for that letter of appointment from America that, listen, we accept, we, uh, we are fascinated with your results and now we are calling you for this job or for this post. Now we should live and walk and strive in such a manner that we become sought for by Allah or from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala seeks us by saying Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati In this dunya we would love sometimes difficulties would come we would have to exercise patience and sabr and there can be no greater jumla and kalima in this particular condition of difficulty other than that of inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un and if that kalima was present at the time of Yaqub alayhi salatu wassalam on the loss of his son Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam most definitely he would have not said ya asafa rather he would have said inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un this kalima the kalima tayyiba is so great when a per person utters it just once he covers the journey of hundreds and thousands of light years going in the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Mujaddid al Fethani used to say, I've got no desire other than having some corner of solitude and making takrar, repeating this great kalima. And as you say it a few times, then say also, add to that, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that you can get the nur of Muhammadur Rasulullah. So this year, Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of saying and listening to the talks of a deen. All those who are sick, Allah grant them shifa. And particularly, uh, I'm mentioning Hazrat Wala is saying, uh, Maulana Maksud Ahmad Sahib, Allah Ta'ala grant him complete shifa. Also, when we look at the Islamic world and we understand about the situation of the earthquake, etc., then also we see a lot of weaknesses, etc., in our Islamic countries. But the fact of the matter is they are in taklif and we should make dua for them. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u al-alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabu al-rahim bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem sallallahu alayhi wa